Buenos días, eh, chicos y chicas eh, de la comunidad del Instituto Tecnológico de Tláhuac 3. Eh, también eh, buenos días a quienes nos siguen desde otras instituciones educativas. Este, damos inicio a la segunda semana de este primer coloquio virtual internacional de ciencias y complejidad y eh, comenzamos o iniciamos la semana eh, con un conferencista, con un ponente que ya lo tenemos con nosotros y nos acompaña desde Austria, un enlace directo que vamos a tener para traer una visión eh, desde las artes de qué es la complejidad. Ah, al igual que las ponencias o los eh, eh, investigadores que tuvimos la semana pasada, eh, esta semana tendremos también eh, ponentes, participaciones de carácter internacional y en este caso eh, tenemos eh, desde Austria eh, un invitado especial. Eh, vamos a, a leer un poco de, del currículum, vamos a leer un poco de la semblanza, no sin antes eh, eh, señalar, eh, pedir eh, que podamos estar atenta a esta, a esta conferencia. Eh, el invitado de hoy eh, se llama Basia Nagy Hofbauer, él es curador independiente y crítico de artes visuales. Eh, su experiencia se ha remontado eh, eh, a la industria de las artes eh, y la cultura y la pintura. Es experto en fotografía, educación artística, eh, patrimonio cultural, eh, con conocimientos en edición y comúnmente imparte conferencias. Uh, eh, él cuenta con una maestría enfocada a la historia del arte, crítica, conservación eh, por parte de la Universidad de Lujana en, en Austria. Eh, desde 2002 es miembro de la Asociación de Críticos de Arte de Eslovenia y es miembro fundador y presidente de una asociación de arte eh, para varios países de la Unión Europea. Básicamente es un experto en, en temas de arte y a nombre de la directora del Instituto Tecnológico de Tláhuac 3, la doctora Analida Bárcenas, damos la más cordial bienvenida a Basia Nagy Hombauer. Eh, Hombauer. Eh, good morning in Mexico, eh, good afternoon in Austria. Um, eh, welcome. Eh, Basia. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, you hear me? Do you hear me? Do, hello. Hello. Uh, Is everything okay? Please. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and. Uh, uh, Good afternoon from Vienna. Good morning to Mexico. Uh, I am very honored to be part of uh, this uh, colloquio. Uh, thank you very much to uh, invite me. Uh, so uh, I will talk uh, about about art in general in in this lecture. Uh, of as in the in the title was stated i would like to uh, think about what can we what should we expect from art in the 21st century which is uh, uh, very difficult to uh, to know uh, quite impossible but there are some uh, some signs uh, in uh, which direction uh, the art or uh, the function of art uh, is going to be. Uh, 
in the beginning i will i will try to uh, to explain uh, in a in a short way the history of art so uh, you can already see uh, the one image and uh, we don't know where art actually comes from what was the first work of art uh, of a human being and uh, what purpose what fu function did it have uh, originally uh, andre leroy guram uh, explained in in one of uh, his books how he visited he was an anthropologist and art historian uh, how he visited uh, in the indigenous people in africa and he took a photo of an antelope and then he wanted to uh, to go uh, he showed the, the photo to, to the people and they liked it and when he he wanted to go home he took the picture with him and they didn't allow him to go away because they uh, uh, they said no if you uh, if you go away with the antelope the antelope will go with you so we can assume that after this experience, uh, the, the anthropologists assumed that the function of art uh, was uh, magical. So the presence of the animal in in the picture, in the image, uh, means the the presence presence of uh, of the animal in the real world. Uh, this is uh, Altamira from uh, 35,000 years ago. But there is, I think, even older, it's uh, uh, bare bone uh, made into, into some kind of flute and was found uh, in Slovenia uh, in some, uh, some cave where the ne Neanderthal human lived uh 60,000 years ago so this is even even older 30 25 30 30,000 years older than uh, than the painting in Altamira and uh, it it is uh, some kind of uh, proof that uh, the neanderthal was able of uh, abstract thinking he uh, uh, this human uh, because it already is Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, so it's, it's a, another subspecies of Homo sapiens, uh, was uh, uh, able to produce music, able to, uh, to be artistically uh, active. It is assumption, of course, but, uh, and, but uh, probably if uh, music is, uh, is there, there is, it is art. So, this uh, transcendental fun function of, of art uh, is pretty obvious even in later arts, like uh, uh, 4,000 years, 5,000 years uh, before Common Era. And uh, this is this, this are, uh, a object from the pre dynastian uh, times in Egypt. And uh, those are objects uh, which were de dedicated to votive purposes and to follow uh, the deceased uh, into the afterworld. Uh, but art had other functions uh, later on, what we can uh, understand from, from, uh, from other uh, examples. So this is uh, is from the later time uh, again the Egypt uh, art and the uh, this uh, art uh, this art is uh, explanatory and and uh, so it is tell is telling the the story of uh, of the world of how the universe cosmo cosmology and uh, how the universe is is made. And uh, and other stories which are connected more to the uh, to the human story. So how how is uh, the system the human si system on Earth uh, built? 
and uh, there are other works which are uh, which are representative uh, like showing the warriors and uh, telling the stories from the past telling the stories from the very near past uh, like in the uh, in in the antiquity uh, there were generals who who, who built their own uh, monuments this is uh, from pompeii a painting in a in a private house uh, it is again represent representational it, it is a god on a pedestal and uh, uh, the function is uh, representational and has has a value in uh, everyday life my my whole presentation my whole uh, lecture will be uh, uh, will be explained from from the position of uh, european uh, person so uh, it is uh, uh, it may be uh, at some points uh, too much europe oriented but uh, i assume that uh, european art uh, has a very long uh, constant history which influenced uh, art in a in a global sense until it started to influence before it uh, before other world was uh, was not so much uh, influenced by uh, by european art but this is this is already uh, already another story uh, about uh, about the european uh, imperialism and uh, it's not part of this uh, of this presentation so here here we see uh, the uh, uh, mosaic from Santa Maria uh, uh, de Trastevere in in Rome, and uh, here, uh, this is again representational. is uh, very uh, schematic art uh, uh, or uh, image where where everything is uh, in its position uh, is placed forever there and explains how uh, shows uh, shows how the uh, how it is in in heavens and uh, it's uh, because of uh, until now we all, we saw only this uh, this kind of representational or explanatory art uh, cult stories from sacred texts uh, or uh, and uh, showing how uh, how life should be and how even uh, after life should be uh, this early early European art style uh, after the antiquity is very static, is very schematic, and it doesn't need uh, a lot of uh, realism. Uh, it just uh, feels like uh, like is there forever. Uh, the main focus is on iconography uh, and rigid rules uh, about meaning of colors, uh, shapes, and uh, and composition as well. Uh, so the artist knew exactly which color means uh, something, and they used them in uh, in in very precise way. Later on, so in in the new age, it's like Renaissance, Baroque, Classicism, uh, Romantics. Uh, is uh, a little bit uh, art shifted to another direction so all the schematics became more free and uh, other topics other themes were entering uh, and entering the in in the depictions i'm showing almost only Paintings because uh, it is easier to to present in uh, in two dimen two, two dimensional space. So this is Botticelli's uh, Primavera, Artemisia Pendlevsky. Is this is already Baroque art? David Friedrich, the sea eyes. 
and this is William Turner. Probably uh, interesting question uh, uh, was the first uh, first era, first uh, art histor art history style that was uh, named in uh, in its time by this name. Uh, for example, Vasari was writing about uh, Gothic and Renaissance, and and he was uh, he was uh, naming Gothic uh, Osanza Moderna uh, and uh, Renaissance Modo Antico, which which means something. Uh, it was modern style was uh, Gothic and uh, uh, Renaissance, which should be some uh, newborn was actually just repeating the uh, the old. Uh, way of doing, uh, and all these uh, before Baroque, all, all the uh, all the styles were were named by art historians afterwards uh, in nineteenth century, uh, in somehow uh, explaining uh, what was it like. The nineteenth century is connected to the newest technological inventions and uh, scientific discoveries. Uh, William Turn Turner is, uh, this is a picture uh, made after discovery of photography. So he knew already how does the photograph look like and uh, with the painting uh, he developed the, the other uh, way of representing reality. Uh, so it was in in a way it was already obsolete uh, the realism or the classical neoclassical real, realism and uh, this this is the research. Maybe it's in, maybe it's, it's interesting to to mention how uh, how the how the brain was researched in in the history. So. Uh, Philosophers and uh, and other researchers, uh, so scientists of the time, uh, always uh, compared uh, how thoughts are working with the newest technology, and this is like in uh, in Roman antiquity, uh, they compared it to uh, to the aqueduct and sewage system. And it was uh, it was not very much uh, researched. It was ne neglected uh, as something that uh, doesn't really matter. And so, in uh, later in nineteenth and twentieth century, uh, was uh, brain was compared to a machine, uh, to a clockwork. And maybe you are familiar with the. Uh, 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 with with the image of uh, of head uh, working with uh, with his uh, wheels and turning around, so this is this is how uh, how uh, were thoughts explained in in the past. Uh, in the last uh, few decades, was computer the, the newest technology, and uh, and brain was uh, compared to to a computer with a hard disk with uh, with REM uh, REM. So the, the memory, the active memory, and the processor, and how uh, how from the hard disk from from the memory the, the information is uh, is gathered and to build uh, new thoughts. Uh, the quantum physics and uh, and uh, science uh, and neuroscience already show that uh, that in brain there is no storage for memory. But uh, has the brain has every time to to build memories, uh, connect different parts of uh, of the brain. So is uh, this always changes with how how a human being is able to uh, to explain uh, themselves uh, the universe. It, the, this is the way how. Uh, how we see the universe. Uh, so, the 19th, in nineteenth century, uh, was science very strong? Uh, very uh, has uh, science very strongly influenced art? 
uh, with new discoveries like uh, photography and uh, as well as how how brain is working, how the eye is working. So uh, impressionism is uh, is kind of realistic uh, realism, but uh, but is already based on. Uh, on exactly how we see, not how our brain adapts to the to, to what we see, and it's very analytical in uh, in how uh, how light uh, works on our brain, and in in other way, our other discoveries like uh, warm air balloon uh, <coughs> help people go in the air and and uh, detach themselves from from the earth for the first time and see the earth from above. Uh, and I would like I would like to uh, to state that art uh, doesn't work in a uh, doesn't evolve in in same way as science or or technology, which is every time better is uh, always making making things better than they were before. In art, uh, art is uh, independent from from that. It's just it just adapts to to the newest technology to the uh, to the mentality in in society to uh, to bring out the the meaning uh, uh, which is intended uh, but uh, and, and in this way technology changes uh, changes pers perspectives changes uh, uh, changes production and changes form of uh, of products bring new objects and changes their meanings as well which uh, and with this uh, influences art in 19th century uh, came to a new genre of fiction and this was horror this happened because because the prosthetism so the prosthetics uh, production of prosthetics uh, was able and uh, and then people would would see everywhere uh, the cripples, so the the people who were mutilated because of war or or some some other accidents, uh, and uh, would with the prosthetics uh, would be able to to keep working, to keep producing. Uh, and uh, before before this, uh, the Disabled people or cripples were kind of uh, like pitiful images, or totally neglected. And the uh, 19th century bring brings them out, uh, brings them to uh, forth in uh, in this horror uh, horror genre. Uh, and, and Another proof of uh, of spirit of time, maybe, and influence between between art and uh, and science is that uh, that the first uh, picture was the painting was was made uh, at similar time as uh, Albert Einstein uh, developed uh, theory of relativity, so the ana analytic uh, cubism. Which is showing objects from different perspectives, from uh, at the same time from different uh, spaces, uh, puts already the relativity uh, into space. The 20th century then develops in in a variety of uh, of movements and groups uh, which have very precise programs. They name themselves through these programs. Uh, they are collective. Uh, they are developing style and ideas, and uh, the, the main thing is that they wanted to renew the world and renew art uh, and renew society. Um, and those are cubism, fauvism, uh, suprematism, dadaism, and, and so on and so on. This fauvism is is again from Matisse, a painting who who was uh, painting with uh, with different colors, but uh, but 
cold and uh, warm and, uh, and made uh, shadings and uh, three-dimensional uh, impression. There is in uh, in the uh, first half of the 20th century there is a, a socialist realism. Uh, this is Diego Rivera, uh, Detroit Industry Mural, and this was uh, more or less uh, is merely political propaganda to gather uh, to gather masses and uh, to to move the masses in uh, in. Uh, with a political uh, position, but uh, realism is uh, is very interesting phenomenon in uh, in art, uh, which occurs always when uh, and becomes popular when uh, when art through art uh, masses should be uh, mobilized or or uh, somehow. Um, Attracted uh, today, we see we see this with the with the Hollywood production, but uh, whenever you uh, whenever uh, uh, you go in in the uh, wherever in the past in in the art history is where there are many people who uh, who watch art who are present at uh, at, uh, at artworks uh, that realism uh, somehow evolves. The Second World Second World War, uh, the art uh, changed again. So the artists uh, began to develop their own personal styles, which were uh, proof of individual uh, artistic uh, creativity or originality. Uh, this is Pollock and and here is Rotko. They were they were part of abstract expressionism. These are styles which uh, which were then like uh, abstract expressionism, mi minimalism, arte povera, uh, which were defined later by art historians again and not given uh, given by artists uh, themselves, uh, even though they the artists. Uh, themselves had a program of uh, of how it uh, art has to be made uh, one uh, this the, the, uh, the main change in uh, in the after after second world war uh, art is that the, the invention of of white cube so the art uh, had to be isolated from from everyday life and uh, uh, and being observed uh, by uh, independently from what is happening around the last modernist uh, movement in uh, in this uh, this way that wanted to uh, to re revolutionize the world and art was conceptual art introduce introducing happening performance combining materials and techniques body arts uh, with the uh, exhibition when attitude becomes form from uh, Harald Seemann in Bern, uh, Switzerland, 1969. Uh, uh, he placed uh, the conceptual art on a pedestal, and from now on, it could uh, slowly get affirmation uh, in galleries and other institutions. In the 80s, the artist, uh, the artists. Uh, uh, dug even deeper into personal interpretation uh, of the content. Individual personal style is not important in, in the sense of a program, uh, the way it was before. Uh, and many create their own uh, iconography, even cosmology. Um, so what is contempor contemporary art? Uh, contemporary uh, art, is, uh, in, in my opinion, is, uh, is a historical style. Uh, is uh, is the attitude of uh, towards art in in this period in the last uh, 30 40 years and uh, and this uh, is very uh, is strongly bind uh, 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 into the context so uh, so it it's not meant to be eternal to be art forever or in in any uh, any uh, situation in any context it has very specific context where uh, where uh, it acts as art and this is 
this is art system consisting of uh, of uh, curators institutions galleries uh, co collectors uh, and so on and so on uh, in in this case, for, for contemporary art, I, I see a very pivotal uh, uh, work of art or uh, gesture, uh, the gesture of Marcel Duchamp, uh, who is uh, named as inventor of ready-made. So he, he, he took, uh, he was questioning in that time, so in, in uh, 1912, he first, uh, 13, he first presented uh, this uh, wheel of, of bicycle and he he was he was questioning authorship uh, uh, uniqueness and and working uh, so um, uh, fabricating in art uh, and uh, this is this is something which uh, which happens in contemporary art as well so it it, it just uh, persists in uh, in in this story uh, now I, I would like to, to mention uh, Henry Lehmann. Uh, he invented the word. His his uh, art historian and philosopher he invented the word Gehalt aesthetic, and it, it, this means in English content aesthetics. And he states that until Renaissance, the artist doesn't dis uh, didn't decide on content. They were working on commission. Uh, in Baroque, uh, from Baroque to Classicism, art follows the schemes of beauty and sublime. So we are talking about a beautiful art, so Las Bellas Artes. Uh, and in the mid of the 19th century uh, and on, is art more based on, on a concept, so on, on, the, on, on, on the idea. It doesn't work anymore with uh, so much on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, these uh, rules of beauty. So he, he places the, the phases of modernism in uh, aesthetics of material, which is classical modern, uh, and uh, anesthetic phase, which is explicit conceptual art, so, so the uh, late 60s and uh, 70s, which, which is still based on program, uh, is, is an ism, but is more abstract. And then postmodern art, which doesn't have programs anymore, uh, in postmodern art is nothing really new and it doesn't replace modern. Uh, some kind of suspension in judgment, some uh, still stand uh, in, uh, in development. So the aesthetics of content from the, from the mid 90s, the artists are totally free to decide on content and create the artworks uh, accordingly. Uh, it is not about material technique, but about uh, a new theme, new accentuation on the theme. So, from which perspective uh, the artists uh, deal with the uh, with the themes, and responsibility for the content is uh, uh, is now not with the artists themselves, but uh, but with the art system, critics, art theory. Uh, and at this point, we, uh, we, we come to the question, what is the role of art critic and curators? So uh, uh, it, there was in, in the classical moder modernism, curator was uh, some uh, very experienced person who, uh, who was judging according to, to the rules, according to the criteria of, uh, of good art. Uh, in, uh, in, with the late, uh, late 70s, uh, the, uh, the art critic some, somehow disappears and comes comes forth uh, art curator who uh, who uh, creates exhibitions and um, uh, and presents uh, presents art and decides on content of exhibition so uh, put uh, has more uh, more authority in uh, in production it, uh, of art itself so contemporary art uh, is uh, is an international art. Pre-modern, modern and pre-modern pre art was European art. Uh, art outside Europe didn't undergo so many continuous changes in the last 200, 2000 years, at least not without European influence, which brings up, the, of course, the, the question that uh, uh, mentioned before of European imperialism. Modern art was a protest against beautiful art in a certain sense, but it actually aestheticized, aestheticized uh, that uh, 
what was previously unknown, so the production, the in industrial uh, aesthetics neglected or aesthetically without value. The same did conceptualism as the last uh, last uh, position in uh, in modernism. Content aesthetics, so this is the postmodern art uh, because it, it is based on theme and theory, is not aesthetically bound to a nation or country, and it doesn't focus itself on European art history. It is therefore international and uh, in style of expression, but the singular narrative stay local. Context is crucial. So uh, some some uh, works of art they uh, they work in. Uh, for example, in Africa or in China, and uh, and they ha have to be different, differently presented if they if they come to to the to Europe or United States because the culture is different. And contemporary, uh, and now uh, uh, th there is another another German uh, philosopher uh, and art historian who. Uh, who wrote about uh, postmodern art uh, very critically, uh, Wolfgang Ulrich, and he uh, coined the term Siegerkunst, which means uh, art of the winners, art of and for the winners uh, of society, of course, and uh, of uh, of art system. So he, he is talking about new aristocracy and uh, and expensive delights. Uh, so art as a delight, art as lust, uh, and the new aristocracy, so they are ultra rich people who can, uh, who, who only can uh, afford it. And he divides the art in pre-modern art, which is represent with representative characteristics, and uh, it's very important the ownership uh, and who commissions the artworks and uh, and they decide on uh, uh, almost everything then in more modern art is more sensual it, it is to be directly receptive observed and experienced um, so art is independent this is white cube uh, and the observer should only ex uh, experience it and get the, uh, the transcendental uh, content of of art, the postmodern art. So and conte so contemporary art is restoration of representative. Uh, and on uh, Ulrich's opinions, it substitutes modern art uh, with its own character and fun function. Ownership and commissions, the commission of artworks are uh, are important again. Uh, uh, so th this is institutions, biennales, uh, collectors, and so on. Ulrich states that the modern art uh, was an exception in history of art, and that the theory of art might lose importance in the uh, in the Siegerkunst, so the uh, art for for the winners and of the winners. Uh, if this continues. Uh, because uh, the con con contemporary art is uh, uh, is somehow uh, art for which expects audience to to be able to read so so uh, that's uh, that's why uh, is uh, is possible to read so many so many texts so so much uh, so much theory about art uh, the new uh, so uh, and the question of socio economical economic political re, uh, relations uh, comes here which is uh, new ultra ultra rich and cooperative econo economy seems to reinstall in some characteristics which are similar to uh, feudalism so we are going back to the uh, to the pre-modern uh, pre-modern uh, relations uh, postmodern art lost criteria that define uh, quality uh, now is uh, in this uh, winner art is m more expensive is better art audience perceives contemporary art through the modernist criteria which gives it false avant-gardist apparel and the guild of science of art so that the theoricians support this attitude art of the winners is not only ridiculously expensive to buy but is often uh, but it often demands high logistic uh, investment up keep keep uh, storage security from the owner the owner has to believe to own something special to do to do all that uh, 
has to have faith in art, faith in system of art. This attitude towards art comes from modernism, where art expected from itself to change the world and the audience believed it. Pre-modern art had clear criteria about quality and didn't uh, need any text to support to support that. So it was uh, directed to the uh, to illiterate people as well. Um, this is Donald Dart, uh, minimalist art, and this is, for example, how uh, how the uh, art for winners and from winners uh, looks like. Uh, the system works. Thank you very much for your attention. I think I uh, I am already over the time, and uh, I will be happy to answer questions. Gracias, eh, Basia, eh, por tu participación. Thank, thank you, Basia, for the explanation. Uh, eh, a continuación, leeremos algunas preguntas. Eh, son muchas. Eh, eh, les enviaremos las preguntas a nuestro ponente por. Eh, por correo electrónico, leeremos alguna, ¿no? Eh... Sí, es, es, sí, sí, por favor. Nos va a apoyar aquí la maestra Paulina, por favor. Good morning, Basha. Hello. Hello. Stephanie Perez asks, how important do you consider the knowledge of art for us as, in, as engineers? Mm. It has been uh, already proven that uh, the art uh, is a way to uh, broaden imagination. So there, there are many scientific uh, institutions uh, that are involving with art, uh, making uh, uh, exhibitions, uh, inviting artists to uh, to work with. Uh, with the topics uh, some these institutions are dealing with and uh, and working with scientists as well because uh, art is some, some kind of uh, way of thinking out of the box uh, and uh, trying to imagine the things differently from the other perspective uh, perspective and uh, but this is not only for the engineers is uh, is a general uh, general function uh, or uh, um, effect uh, of art so any any kind of uh, any kind of art okay thanks uh, Luis Dani Garcia Reza as what do you think about Mexican muralism Oh, uh, I don't know much about the, the Mexican murals. I was only once in uh, in uh, in Mexico, and uh, of course, it's uh, they are beautiful artworks, um, and they have m many different aspects. But uh, to to say something uh, um, really meaningful, I I should. Uh, spend more time uh, more time st studying them uh, to, to say something uh, uh, really meaningful i i should uh, spend more time uh, more time st studying them uh, to, to say something uh, uh, really meaningful i i should uh, 
Um, thanks, uh, Danny Butera. Yes. How is the pandemic affecting artists? Um, thanks, uh, Danny Butera. Yes. How is the pandemic? Uh, it, the pandemic is uh, like uh, in in this way uh, with the res restrictions of uh, of movement and uh, making uh, uh, events is, is uh, problematic. Uh, like, uh, in, in this way, uh, it is very it is very difficult to uh, to organize. Uh, large exhibitions to bring more people. Uh, people are more isolated. Uh, well, maybe maybe one one funny thing is that I, I did a, a small uh, in the the, the longest lockdown. I did a, a project and I showed uh, artworks in uh, in the park because everything else was closed. So people so art was not accessible to to the audience. Like. Uh, Churches, museums, uh, private collections. Uh, so uh, for me, it was necessary that uh, that the art comes uh, and is present uh, in in society. Uh, but now is is a little bit better. But uh, of course, is uh, the other thing is uh, is art market where uh, where the the big uh, the big the, the strongest. Uh, galleries they survive and uh, auction houses like Sotheby's or Christie's, uh, but smaller galleries and uh, and artists uh, of this lower or middle uh, market uh, they struggle to survive with uh, with their their work. Or middle uh, market. Uh, thank uh, Basha, um, Paola Ojeda, uh, uh, question, uh, what is your opinion about uh, digital uh, art? What digital art? Uh, question, uh, what I, is your opinion about uh, digital art? Uh, I somehow don't don't believe in uh, in this uh, uh, in, in in this term digital art because every art we see is uh, uh, is present in uh, in real time in uh, in some kind of medium and digital is uh, is what is what consists of uh, a tip uh, a particular. Uh, way of uh, trans uh, transfer of information, so the zeros and ones. Uh, but there is art which is, which uh, which exists on uh, on med in mediums or is done with the tools which is based on on digital technology. Uh, one uh, the, the pioneers of of this kind of art they are net artists uh, from uh, from the 90s uh, and uh, they ended in late uh, in late 90s uh, they stopped uh, existing as a as a group and they were very active in internet at that time uh, so uh, then internet changed and and they stopped stopped working uh, in uh, in in the same way, but they they started to do other other things. Uh, for me, is uh, art uh, presented and done with uh, tools and media which is based on digital technology uh, is just the same as uh, any other kind of art. Is it everything is just about uh, the meaning which is transmitted through through the artwork. Uh, it's just the same as uh, any other kind of art. It, it, everything is just about uh, the meaning which is transmitted through, through the artwork. El profesor Andrés Miranda tiene una pregunta, se encuentra también ya enlazado con nosotros. Profes eh, please, este profesor eh, Andrés Miranda, por favor. Good morning. Hola. Tiene una pregunta, se encuentra también ya enlazado con nosotros. Por favor, eh, please. Ok, profesor. Muchas gracias. Some students eh, ask you, 
What is the motion to do art is transmit in this century, in the technology, technology century? Uh, would you please repeat? Okay. Uh, what the motion uh, the art transmit in this century, in the technology age? Would you please repeat? I don't think that art has uh, some sp is uh, connected to some special emotion uh, uh, there are all emotions present in in uh, in art and uh, with art uh, but if i if i understand it in in a different way uh, the, the the question so uh, how it, it, it would be how should we feel about about the art in uh, in uh, in these times and uh, art is always uh, kind of mirror to the to the con contemporary uh, society so so it expresses itself with the, with the means that uh, that the society can understand and uses uh, uses the means uh, that are present uh, at, at the present time uh, so it is always part uh, part of of how we live and uh, is uh, uh, is actually showing just showing us uh, who we are and where where are we going and uh, it, it it's only that we need to uh, analyze and to think about to reflect on uh, what do we see okay uh, uh, thank you uh, basia uh, gracias maestro andres uh, eh, por estas preguntas. No sé si tengas alguna otra para ya pasar a la entrega de, del diploma a nuestro ponente. No, ninguna otra. Muchas gracias. Basha, thank you very much thank for your participation. Thank you for your attention and thank you for all the questions. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that uh, uh, this uh, epidemics goes away and that we can meet uh, somewhere in person. Ok, gracias. Eh, eh, desafortunadamente se nos... Eh, estaban escuchando la... la... Gracias. Este, desafortunadamente se nos ha terminado el tiempo. Ya tenemos también este, en un momento más la, la siguiente ponencia. Vamos a dar paso a la entrega del de diploma del reconocimiento eh, a nuestro participante del día de hoy. El Instituto Tecnológico Nacional de México, a través del Campus Tláhuac 3, otorga la presente constancia a Basia Naji Hosbauer por haber participado como ponente en el primer coloquio virtual internacional de ciencias y complejidad celebrado del 23 de septiembre al 2 de octubre del 2020, firma la doctora Ana Lidia Bárcenas Cortés, directora del Instituto Tecnológico. Eh, congratulations, eh, thank you very much, eh, Basia. Eh, Muchas gracias. Sí. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Gracias, maestro Andrés. Gracias a ustedes. Buen día.